All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Europe, from Amsterdam in the Netherlands by Frank Hootsman. How are you doing, Frank? Hey, John. Yeah, I'm doing good. How about yourself? Yeah, doing great. And Frank is a, an internet entrepreneur focused on B2B and SaaS marketing. As a former SaaS founder, he knows the challenges and pitfalls of growing a company. And with over 20 years experience in B2B marketing and sales, his goal is to assist B2B founders and marketers to show their expertise. This way you will become the authority in your in industry. So you never have to worry about new business again. And that's what we're going to talk about today is authority marketing for B2B companies. Um, so Frank, let, let's just baseline it to begin with. Just define authority marketing for me. Yeah, John, great question. Basically, it's how do you become an authority in, in your market? And you becoming an authority means that you have to show your expertise. And when you show your expertise quite a long time, at some point, you'll be a, a thought leader or an authority in your industry. Mm. The thing is that most people have so much knowledge inside their head because they've work with so many clients in the past, right? But they never really show it or, or tell about it. And when you do, uh, the funny thing is that you will draw clients to you like a magnet. And it can be done in, in several different ways, of course. But that's basically the gist of it. Mm -hmm. And so in order to be, in order to be author uh, uh, an authority, then you have to focus a lot on how you communicate with the market and how you communicate with prospective uh, customers and clients. Yeah, that, that's true. Well, the, the thing is that, um, so I work a lot with, with tech companies. Uh, some mm -hmm. of them are SaaS companies, some of them have hardware, but anyway, it's always in a, a techie space and they always start out with a great product, right? Yeah. And it's most of the time is one or two people, one or two great people who invent something mm -hmm. and then they want to bring it to market. And they have so much knowledge about the problem that they're trying to solve, but they sometimes, I, well, I think a lot of B2B companies just focus on the features, right? And the, and the bolts yeah. and the things that they do, but they don't really talk about the problems that they're solving. So that's that's basically step one and, it, and telling it and showing it. Yeah. And I think sometimes that's because, uh, as you said, I mean, get carried away with the technology and not so much about the business use cases of it. And I think that's where sometimes companies fall down and not being able to articulate how this helps you in this particular business use case in this particular you know industry that you may be in yeah t totally true yeah and especially when the founders are really technical and you, you got uh, another challenge right because um it, it's it's really saying the things that your prospects want to hear in their words and, mm -hmm. and solving their problems and talking about that and um yeah and you can do that in, in many different ways i mean I, like you mentioned in the intro i've been doing this for about yeah, 20 years or so. And uh, in the past, of course, you can do all sort of things offline and you can do press releases and whatnot. But um, I think five years ago when I had my own SaaS, um, we just did a lot of gas blogs and, and creating our own content. And that mm -hmm. really uh, made us an authority in the space because no one else was really doing it that way. Uh, but nowadays, you really have to do some other things to, uh, to show your authority. Yeah, yeah. Because let's face it, I mean, people, uh, you know, people are churning out content like there's no tomorrow right now yeah. and you know using ai tools using all of this so it's becoming harder and harder to filter out the noise so what are some of the strategies that you uh, you help your clients with in order to overcome what is you know where it's just such a volume of stuff coming at people that they're kind of you know closing down if you like yeah, I think I want to circle back first to what you mentioned about the whole AI avalanche of content that's been going on. Because, I mean, I think uh, for a year now, or just less than a year, um, I see a lot of marketeers just go wild with creating so much content. And I, and when you even go back a little while, that the whole idea of content marketing is that every company is going to become a publishing company. Mm -hmm. So you have to churn out content. So yeah. what they used to do, <laughs> create yeah. content by blogging, right? So not one article a month, because that was just the baseline. We'll go to two, then we go to four. And now we have the AI thing going. And there are seriously companies that churn out content like there's no tomorrow. And mm -hmm. the average quality of the content is, I mean, it's it's getting really worse and worse. I mean, I don't know about you, John, but have you ever Googled something lately in the past? And 
<laughs> what was your experience? Yeah, it's terrible. Terrible. The results yeah. are so all over the place. Yeah, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And then, and when, when you go to one of these these pages, right, then and, and you read them, you're like, what am I really reading? I mean, who wrote this? Um, and of course, there are always exceptions. And but I mean, um, there are so many tools that are being misused right now. So back to your original question, um, what are the tactics that, that we're employing uh, right now? Well, of course, it always starts with a plan. Uh, what do you want to be an authority about? It's just like the number one thing, right? And um, uh, and the feedback that we always get is, that, well, okay, I don't feel like I'm an authority yet. But the thing is that you're always way ahead of your prospects because you've been into in this in this industry trying to solve a problem for, I don't know, a year, two, five, whatever. I mean, so you know a bit more about it and you can always yeah. share that perspective, right? So that that's one. So the plan, what do you want to be an authority about? You will have your key messages you always want to return to whenever you're saying something. Uh, and the second part is, I mean, that's, that's for, for us, that's really the easy part. Um, I think we used to churn, to not churn, we used to create about 30 blogs, 30 blog articles, really well-written articles every month for our clients. Mm -hmm. uh, but since, uh, definitely since six months now, uh, this has been turned around to video basically. Yeah. Because um, everyone is uh, trying to dominate Google with, crappy content mm -hmm. and it's really hard to 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 come up yeah to to, to be even yeah. seen through all this noise basically um yeah of course there are so many you can always do it i mean and i'm not saying that's a bad strategy but uh we've we've been switching over to video content basically because it works and the thing yeah. that we're doing right now is just we do one hour with a founder of a or a subject matter experts one hour per month and we create content for a month we create a blog article a newsletter article We'll create a long form video. We'll create a podcast out of it. We'll create short videos for socials. Most of our customers have prospects on LinkedIn. So they'll use it there or even YouTube shorts. And that's um, the tactics that we're using right now with, um, with, well, I have to say, with some great results from our clients. Yeah. And I think one of the things I just pick up on that you said there was, uh, you know, in order to be an authority and and be a subject matter expert, I mean, there's so much general and super generalized stuff and superficial stuff out there that it, it's kind of worth focusing on an area and actually really, really becoming an expert in it or sharing kind of insights that other people haven't shared, because that's what's going to make you stand out, because there's a lot of people, as you say, just throwing stuff out. Uh but if you can really show expertise in a particular area, so maybe narrow your focus a little bit. Yeah, completely. Like like being a, an authority in a niche industry. That's basically the goal. Yeah. Um, so, for example, we could talk about what is a CRM. That, that's something that anyone can Google that even yeah. ChatGPT would have the answer to, right? Mm -hmm. But you have to narrow it down to a specific use case, a specific um, uh, industry, or you know, what, or a specific ecosystem that you're working with. And if you just niche it down, then you can talk about all the problems that your prospects are facing in that specific area. And yeah. you will become an authority in that really micro niche, basically. Yeah. And what you were saying about video, I mean, it's obviously very true because, I mean, that's the, that's the in many ways, that's what you want from content is you want to be able to produce it once and leverage it many times. So, you know, video content lends itself to that a, a lot easier than, uh, than written content does because obviously, as you said, with video content, you have a video, you can have short videos out of it, you can have blog posts, you can you know, put newsletters together, you can tweet, you can do all, so you can extract the audio and you can be on all the podcast platforms, which we do for all of this. And it, it definitely like um, completely uh, increases your reach. Yeah, that, that's so true because I think that's another thing that's that's a difference we, uh, from five years ago or even longer ago is that um, we used to have we used to only have Google basically, yeah, <laughs> and that's it. But there are now so many other channels that, for example, if you would need I don't know some transcription service for sales calls, right? I mean, what would you do? We used to go to Google, but you can go to G two, Captera. That th those are the easy ones. Mm -hmm. those, they have got all these listings from SaaS companies, right? But maybe you're also in a Slack group of, uh, of salespeople, or maybe you're in a Facebook group or in a LinkedIn group, whatever. There are mm -hmm. so many small uh, groups that you can join right now. Um, and you can ask people that question. You can put a tweet, ask me, mm -hmm. anything, um, or you can put it on a, in a LinkedIn post and ask people. And, and that's actually called dark social. So there's a lot of, there are more channels basically that we can get information from. 
And like you mentioned before, John, I think um, if you do the video, you can use it on so many different platforms that people are actually using. I'm, I'm not trying, I'm, I'm not saying you have to spread yourself thin, always yep. choose one main channel uh, and focus all your efforts on that. For most of our clients, it's going to be LinkedIn. So make sure that you post your organic content based on the video there. And if the, the good content that has got a lot of engagement, you have to boost it by, by uh, LinkedIn ads. But the other channels are important too, because I mean, sometimes people will just go to YouTube, right? To, to find a great CRM system for creatives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think that's, and I think that's what people sometimes don't understand is that yeah, YouTube is is the second most used search engine, I think, and it's used uh, it's used a lot by business people, uh, and I and I think sometimes people overlook that and they still think YouTube is an entertainment channel when it's when it's absolutely not. Uh, it's uh, it's as informative as as any, and like I said, it's used as a search engine too. Yeah, completely true. So. I think, I don't know, about maybe seven or, or eight years ago, I used YouTube for the first time, not for entertainment purposes, but to, mm -hmm. I, I'm really bad at DIY in my house. So I had to mm -hmm. look something up in my attic, I had to, I don't know, what, whatever it was. But so I had to change something uh, and I looked it up and I saw someone doing it. I was like, okay, that's pretty, that's not really that hard. Turned out it was kind of hard when someone yeah. else did it. But anyway, it helped me learn. Uh, so fast forward to today, there's so much great knowledge out there about, b2b marketing demand generation uh, video marketing right how do you set up your lighting how, what cameras do you use how do you do all the ai stuff that's going on how do you mm -hmm. it's it's incredible and and it's yeah it's 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 not only google anymore that's the yeah point. and the other thing too is i mean going back to your example of doing the 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 diy i mean that's what i've used youtube in for the past and, and then to be honest what are you interested when you do that? You're interested in somebody who can walk you step by step through the issue and you can understand it. You don't care if it's a professional set. You don't care if the lighting's perfect. You don't care if this, as long as you're getting the good information. And I think sometimes people get intimidated and they think, oh no, I need to have all of this in place before you, I can do anything. And you say, no, it's the content. It's what you're communicating is the important thing. Yeah, John, that's that's a great point. I mean, but that also goes back to, I mean, your first tweet, your first LinkedIn post, mm -hmm. your first blog, your first post podcast or whatever. I mean, of course you want, I mean, it kind of depends on your character, right? But some people think that, so we're a company right now and everything has to be a 10 plus, uh, it has mm -hmm. to be broadcast on Netflix or whatever, you know, but that's definitely not the case. Just start somewhere. And I mean, if you look back at your first tweets, your first LinkedIn post, your first blog articles, they were probably not the best as well, yeah. right? So same goes for my first videos. They were not, definitely not mm -hmm. the best. And uh, and we're all still learning. Um, and, and coming back to uh, educational posts, I mean, yes, we have to start with educational posts. Uh, that, that's definitely the, the first mm -hmm. thing that we should do. But uh, as you do it more often, I think the next step will be to bring it more to an, an edutainment kind of way to bring things, maybe switch it up, throw yeah. some new in it. I mean, but that's that's really, I mean, if you've done it for over a year, then you can switch things up. And then when you want to take it even further, yes, you can try and entertain or create a bit better lightning, whatever, make it more professional. If you definitely see the results, which I, I think they will definitely come because no one is really doing it in a structured way, probably in your micro niche. Yeah, no, I'm absolutely. And, I, and the other part, too, then is to not, uh, as you said, uh, uh, spreading yourself thin, but particularly on the so many different tools and platforms and things that you could do today is you have to be very disciplined and just sort of say is that where my target audience really is right so are they on tiktok probably not uh, a lot of them but then again if you're in a different type of business maybe that's exactly where they all are but being but being intentional about the the channels and the platforms you choose i think is important as well because otherwise you're again you're just throwing content out there yeah, completely true. I think it always starts with, with just interviewing your ideal client profile or just the clients that your company already has, right? Mm -hmm. And you'll ask them, where do you get your information from? If you know all these things and they all say TikTok, well, they'll go, just go <laughs> for it, right? But they probably will be saying LinkedIn for most of the, the time mm -hmm. in your, when you're in B2B space. Um, and and if when you're a marketing manager, I think you should allocate most of your resources to the number one channel, right? But you also have to have about 5% or so of your budget to experiment and just take a quarter or so uh, to experiment in a different channel. I'm not saying go all in on TikTok or whatever, but um, it's good to, to, to test a little bit 
and it also depends on the revenue that you're uh, at with the company. Um, and for most companies that haven't really hit big um, revenue goals, just go for one channel and just dominate that. Okay. Yeah. No. That's a that's a that's a great piece of advice. So, um, are there are there any are there any other uh, creative things that you see that are happening now, or new things coming that people should be paying attention to? I think I mentioned um, edutainment, right? Yeah. I think in the in the, in the video space, um, just make sure that you're educating people. That's the step one. But I see some B two B companies really trying to do it in a way. With, um, with with serious video editing and um, that that really raising the bar by creating edu edutainment videos and what what I mean by that is that if you would look at a doc documentary on Discovery Channel or any other channel, um, you have these great infographics or whatever and um, it, it really makes it it makes it pop and, um, and that's that's definitely raising the bar on the, on the video content mm -hmm. um, level. But like I mentioned before. It, if you're going to start out, you're probably way ahead um, from the other people in your in your niche uh, because mm -hmm. they're really not doing it right now. Um, yeah, that's 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 what I'm seeing yeah. most of the time. Yeah, and I think the other thing too is, I mean, you can be, you, as you said, I mean, there's lots of different ways of. of you know, creating, you know, va valuable entertainment or edutainment. I think the the one thing that you have to be careful about is not to try and become somebody you're not. So, you know, not to try and suddenly change your personality or start to try and be funnier than you are because, you know, humor is extremely subjective and culturally sensitive. So, I mean, it's I was thinking, you know, you got to be very careful on that one. Um, but just, but I think the thing is, like Oscar Wilde said, uh, you know, be yourself because everybody else is taken. So uh, I think it's really key that you remain authentic to who you are and don't try to take on a persona. Yeah, and being authentic also means that you can share personal stories about mm -hmm. the journey that you are on as a founder or a marketer or whatever you're an expert on. Um, so. It, also, it always goes with ups and downs every journey. So it's really, and being authentic is not only being that educator, telling mm -hmm. the people what you already know what they don't know, but also telling them about the, how things went wrong for you in the past mm -hmm. and how you recovered from it. That's also being authentic. And um, that can be on a micro scale from, from your own perspective, but also from the company's perspective, or maybe something that you dealt with with a client. Um, it will make you, yeah, like a <laughs> human, right? Yeah, and I think at the end of the day, you know, that's the that's the key part because, uh, you know, we've come through the pandemic, even before the pandemic, we were getting kind of disconnected and now we're all looking for that kind of connections and that human element. And, and now we have AI and chatbots and everything and now we're even less convinced about who we're talking to or who we're even communicating with. So I think there's a there's a lot of power in that human human connection. I think this is this is I think a, a real valid point uh, when I look at, at the the broader space because some people just want to automate 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 right mm -hmm. everything just do yeah. everything by AI. I'm definitely not against it. I mean, if you want to do for it, go for it, go for it. Of course, well, it will help us uh, mm -hmm. a lot in our day to day things um, that we're doing as in our work, not only in our workplace, but anyway, that's what we're talking about. But the other uh, way is to, how can we be more human? How can we show uh, more of our authenticity, right? And I think that direction, those are two paths that, that's where, that we're probably exploring at the same, we should, well, yeah. you should do anything, but my advice would be to explore both paths. And especially when you're in, in software business, you can't really, you can't really grab it, right? You can put it in a box, you can ship it. So, uh, it, make sure that you show the human side of what you're actually doing and that comes also with feelings try to communicate them and there's no greater way to do that than with video yeah and just to make sure when you are doing all that automation and stuff like that that you're not doing it to suit you rather than the the customer you know so you're not doing it all kind you're not looking always internally as you're doing things and you're saying no this actually will benefit you know and it will benefit them and maybe always keep in mind that human element so, um, listen, Frank, this has been great. All Frank's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a bit, little bit more about you and your business. Yeah, thanks, John, for having me. Yeah, um, you can just check out maxial.com. That's my agency that, that, that we're running. And we're creating expert content to make sure that you're going to be an authority in your industry. And there's some free videos and ebooks as well there as well. So make sure you check out maxial.com. Thanks.
Yeah, fantastic. Listen, thanks again, Frank, for joining us. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon. Thank you.